Hello everybody and welcome back. In today's video we're going to be doing some Linux work um, for our PFSense lab environment that we've been building the last couple of videos. Um, so as you can see here I got my PFSense up and running. Um, I have all my NICs and LANs and done. If you want to set this up and follow along you know exactly as I'm doing it today um, just go back check out my other video the PFSense uh, installation and firewall setups. And you can go ahead and literally follow along identically for what we're doing here. Um, I do have this up and running on my actual cloud server, so you can download this copy at any time. Um, you just have to set up a couple of virtual NICs. Again, just go back, check out the other video I created on how to settle this up, and you'll be good to go and be able to follow just like I am. Um, so we're going to be doing Debian 10 Active Directory install. Now, as you can see here, I already have a Debian 10 installed. And I already have it configured for the basics and to go on um, to do the Active Directory installation and so on. But honestly, I think probably what would be best is to do it from scratch. So you got your Debian 10 CD. You want to go ahead and do this from start to finish. You want to make sure there's no hocus pocus stuff done in the background that I did. Um, so I'll make it easy. What I'm going to do though is that throughout most of the installation of the Debian 10, I'm going to skip a lot of the stuff, so I'm going to pause the video, wait till it's finished installing, because it can take a while for a lot of the installs. Um, and I really don't want to make this a six-hour long video. Um, you know, these videos are long enough to begin with. I also went ahead and wrote out a nice little, you know, guide here on step-by-step -step of, you know, our prerequisites of what we need to know and what we need to have to do before we do this installation. Um, everything in here is based off of the lab environment I created. Um, so if you want to actually do this in a live environment, you will have to obviously change a few things like your domain name, your realm, your host name, um, obviously your IP address if it's not in the uh, 192.168.3 realm, um, DNS servers and so on. But for the most part, this will be exactly as how you would set it up if you were doing it live or even in the virtual. So some of the more particular things, like I said, the domain name, the IP addresses and the DNS will probably be different, but the steps are all the same. So if we scroll down here, you're still going to have to do all this installation here. You got to type in all this information. Uh, you're going to verify your server setup when you do it here, your, your, your Kerberos, um, how to ping, how to enable your Insama. So everything here is going to be the same. Um, it's just, like I said, a few things will be different. I'll let you know that once we get to that point. So to slow down the video and make it a little bit you know, easier, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and install our Debian 10. So I'm going to create a whole new virtual based on this. So file new virtual. Now, if you haven't done this before, you can check out my other videos on how to do the installations for most of them. So I'm actually going to do this as quickly as possible because um, I really don't want to spend too long, you know, explaining everything here. So what I recommend you doing is that if you're going to follow along, just you know, quickly go ahead and follow everything I do. Next, other. Nope, we go to Linux. Scroll up to the top to Debian 9 because this one doesn't understand Debian 10, and that's fine. Okay, we're just going to call this Debian server. Actually, we're going to make it AD domain server. If I can spell. Okay, here, I'm just going to give it 64 gigs. We're not going to use it remotely close to that number, but I always like to give myself a little bit more um, than I need. Okay, we're going to click finish. Okay, and then we just got to do a few edits here. First edit is going to be the memory. I'm going to give us four gigs. Um, realistically, we're going to switch to two gigs once the installation is done, but I'm doing four gigs because I do want the installation to go by pretty quickly for this video here. All right, and processors, um, I have a single core processor, so I can't do multiple processor setups and per cores. Now this just emulates it. So if I want to do two processes, I can to emulate this. And what it's going to do is it's going to take it and emulate it out. Um, but for here, one core, one processor, dual core should be more than enough we need. So our networking for the time being, um, if you're doing a fresh install, you're probably going to want to do bridged or NAT. But for me, I'm going to have to set up for LAN 2 because it's going to go off, like I said, our PFSense video that we're building. I usually remove printers because I don't use printers and I don't need the sound card, but I usually don't bother because I don't have it enabled anyway. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK. And then we're going to go ahead and power this on.
your choice. I do graphical install because it's very simple and easy. You know, even the newest of new people can pull it off and it really doesn't do anything special. And maximize the screen here. Um, and like I said, I'm going to go through this very quickly. Um, so here you're going to select your language. I'm going to hit English. Select the location. My keyboard is American. Now it's going to detect uh, my hard drive, my hard drive, and my CD-ROM drive to make sure it's got all the components. And like I said, this is going to be pretty much a long install. Um, you're probably going to spend about a good 30 minutes um, probably doing the install for this. So that's why I'm going to end up pausing the video in certain spots and just letting it install and do it. But I will make sure we bring up all the key spots that we need to know for our Active Directory install. But for the most part, you're just installing, you know, a Linux operating system. Bare bones, nothing special with it. Okay, so for host name, we can leave it as this and change it later. Or if you know that we're going to make this a special setup, we're going to go ahead and do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it now because I don't want to be bothered doing it later. But I will show you how to change it later if you you know want to change it or you made a mistake at this point. So it'll be our domain controller number one. Okay, same thing with the domain name. If you leave it blank, it's going to be um, Debian.local or... Um, yes, I believe it's going to be Debian.local. So again, what we're going to do here is we're going to make sure our domain name, as I bring it back up, minimize that, matches our domain name that we picked here. Now, like I said, it's usually Debian local, but mine is actually Debian server.local. So I just changed it a little bit. So Debian svr.local. All right. Now, normally with this, it would be the name of your website or company and everything like that. So for example, mine would be, it would normally be that. And then the actual full host name would be dc01.vmwareadvisor.com. But I'm not going to do that because again, I want everybody to kind of follow along in like I said, my PFSense videos. So to make it simple, debianserver.local. Hit continue. Configuring the network. It's going to set to DHCP and that's fine. Now we're going to go ahead and type in your root password. Now this is the password to get you into the computer. This is not going to be the Active Directory password. So just remember that. If you lose this password, you are, and not, not a shit's creek without a paddle, but not really the most best scenario you're going to be. Um, now you're going to go ahead and create a full new username. So There we go. Okay, again, you're going to pick a password. Oops. Hit continue. Okay, it's going to configure my clock. Now, I'm from the East Coast in the US, but I'm actually currently not there at the moment. Uh, but I'm still going to configure for the East Coast. It's fine. Alright, so when you're installing a server, you have usually two options. You have the you know, basic you know, entire disk setup, the LVM, and the LVM encrypted. Um, because of the server, my recommendation is the encryption. Why? You should encrypt every server. With today's security policies, every server should be encrypted. Um, but you can do just the basic guided entire disk, but I want mine to be encrypted. So it picks up our hard drive. I'm going to leave everything together. Now, a lot of people want you to separate the two, um, usually with the home partition, but I never really bother you know, you know, separating the home partition and the regular one. It's not a big deal, especially with smaller drives. If you're building a very big drive, then yes. So here, we want to write the changes and configure the LVM. Now, it should ask me for a password to create for our LVM, and then you'll see what it does later. 
So what it's going to do now is actually going to partition everything out and do a clean. So I'm going to pause the video, come back once it's all done. Um, when it's done, it should then prompt us for a password. So go ahead and I'll see you in a few seconds. Okay, so here is the passphrase that we're going to need to encrypt the disk with the LVM encryption we chose. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit show clear password because honestly I'm not really that worried about anybody seeing it. Um, it's also going to be in the tech notes as well. So with this you're going to have to make a password that is uppercase, lowercase, numbers, the whole nine yards, you know, and they prefer to have it more than 20 characters and that's up to you. Um, for this tutorial though, I'm going to leave it just like this. I, I do not recommend using this password for your encryption. It can be broken very easily. It's not that you know difficult. Um, but I'm just showing you in just principle password you want to use or some kind of password to get it going. All right, we're going to hit continue. And then it should go through probably another long installation process. Um, I don't actually remember, but we'll find out. Okay, asking do you want to use the whole volume, do you want to split it up? We're going to go ahead and use the whole volume. And then this is going to go ahead and just confirm everything they're doing. All right, so we don't have to go ahead and tell it what it wants to do. I don't got to configure anything else here. I'm good to go with their default. So make sure that it's highlighted, finish partitioning, and write to disk. Hit continue. Okay, we're going to hit yes because we do want to make the changes happen. Okay, and it's going to go ahead and partition and format the rest of it that it needs to. Um, so again, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, wait for it to be done for the next step, and then we'll pick up from there. Okay, so we're done doing that. Now we don't need to install anything else from the CD, so I'm going to hit continue. My package manager, again, depending on which country you're from, you're going to want to pick the one closest to you. Uh, I don't use a, pa a proxy. Now it's just going to start checking to see if there's any updates. Um, depending on when you watch this video, some updates may come in much bigger packages. Um, this is a very recent um, video from the actual release date of Debian 10. So when I got this copy of it, it pretty much has everything we need on there. So there's not too much to worry about updating this. Even when we get later into the operating system, there shouldn't be much updates at all. All right, during the installation of software, it will get to a point where it asks you questions like this. You can leave it as default. Um, you'll just get the command line interface. So if you're extremely comfortable with the command line interface, go ahead and leave this as default. What I usually do is I like to add the SSH server. But I'm going to go ahead and actually add a desktop environment for anybody who's not particularly good, you know, very well with the command line interface. So if they have any problems, they're able to actually go through the file structures and everything and change anything. Um, personally, I always like Mate, but you can use KDE, Cinnamon, GNOME, whatever your flavor of Linux your choice is. Um, I don't want the print server turned on, um, but I can leave it turned on. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm not going to use any printing in this. Um, but if you're actually setting this up as a domain controller and you want to add a print server to your printers and everything like that, I recommend leaving this on. But for our video, it's not going to be required, so I'm going to turn it off to try to speed the process up even more. So make sure you have everything selected that you want. Hit continue. Okay, so now we're all ready to reboot the system and see if we can get into our operating system. Um, probably took close to 20 minutes to do the install. Um, again, every computer is different in that. But we are here at the end finally, so let's go ahead and hit continue. And now it's going to go ahead and reboot. Okay. Now, when you add the encryption, you're going to be prompted with the next screen. 
which is asking us here to type in the password. If you do not type in this password or you type it in incorrectly, obviously you'll never be able to boot to the OS. This will prompt you every time. Now again, I recommend this for anybody who installs this on a live machine as well, not only virtual but live, if you're going to use this you know, actively. Again, because security today is outrageous and people hold data that they need and everything else, so it's smart to keep all that. So first things first, we're gonna log in as our root. Now we did create a, a basic user um, to go ahead and log in, but he has basic user access. He does not have pseudo access. Um, so we can go ahead and either add that, um, or for the most part, we can leave it as root. Um, if you're in a live environment, I don't recommend using root. I recommend you creating a new user, adding him to a pseudo, creating a whole new group, and then disabling root. Um, to log in so that any hackers or any kind of programs cannot go ahead and, you know, exploit your root um, access controller. Okay, so let's go over here, look at my connection for interface. Looks like that's up and running. And then I'm going to go ahead here to system tools, to terminal, and I just want to see if I can ping all my stuff. So ping the router. We're good. Ping a DNS. We're good. And then ping google.com. And we are good. Um, also, for just good measure, I always like to make sure I go to here, to here. And the reason why I do this is because I just want to verify that there is internet connectivity here. There's no pre problems that we made during the installation to stop me from being able to go anywhere. So, youtube.com, as you can see here, everything's working. This is all also running through my PFSense router here. As you can see here, LAN2 is 192.168.3.254. So if I turn off this PFSense router, all this goes dead. There'll be no more internet, no more connectivity. It's no longer going to function. Um, so if you want to know how to set that up, again, watch our video one about how to set up PFSense and in our video two on how to set up all the firewalls for each one of these network connections. But with that said, we went ahead and installed Debian, uh, Debian 10 right to the desktop. Everything is working properly. We tested everything that we need to test. So as far as I can tell, it's been a success. Okay, so with all that, I think that we are ready to say that this is uh, successful, I guess. Um, in part two, I'm going to go ahead and install Active Directory for this domain server. Um, as I said, I'll go ahead and do this for this, but I'm actually going to split this up into two parts um, because it's a very long video. Um, I will upload the actual full video of me doing it from start to finish, so installing Debian and the actual second part of it. But I feel that there are going to be some people who just want to know how to install the AD part of it and not really care about how to install Debian from start to finish. Um, so with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. hope you guys understand what's going on with it. Um, like, subscribe, check out part two if you're only watching part one. And check out my other videos where I do the PFSense 2.244 lab with this. Um, explaining how to set a PFSense router to mock one of their application gateways they have. And to go from there and pretty much set the whole virtual environment all encompassed with each other. So I hope everybody has a great day and I'll catch you guys in the next video.